what was that noise? We got to wait for it, for the modem to kick in, warm up so it won't buffer. So welcome everyone. Four hours, live hangout, David Wood. So wait, there's going to be another hangout with David Wood where he speaks 90% of the time and he just puts John McCray and Adam Coleman as like show pieces. Is that what's going to happen? So let's see, four hours. What time would that be? Four hours from now. Okay, 132, 33, 34, 30, 35. Okay, that's good then. All right. How's everybody doing? Four hours or three hours? So what time do they officially start? Can someone give me a time frame? Everybody here? The mods are here. Everyone ready? I'm actually a little drained. But we're trusting <clears throat> the Holy Spirit of the living God to energize me, rejuvenate me, replenish, replenish me, and replenish all of us as the Holy Spirit loosens my tongue to speak clearly without error, without confusion for the glory of Jesus Christ. So we're going to wait a few more minutes. 1611, good to see you. So what time are they going live? I'm <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, I, that's why I do that, Mar Maron. I try to come at a reasonable time so I can catch the people in Europe. But it's almost impossible to do that. Yeah. So, Andrew, what time is their show? So I can time myself. Four hours and 30 minutes. So four hours and 30 minutes. So that means two, three, four, five. So five o'clock, my time, which would be eight o'clock New York time. And Lord Jesus willing... God willing, I'll be on John McRae's, what do you mean, <clears throat> YouTube channel tomorrow. Tomorrow, John McCrane has scheduled, Lord Jesus willing, a live discussion, a live session with me where we dismantle, refute the heretic Roger Perkins' questions about the Trinity. He's a oneness modalist heretic. So <clears throat> mark that down and join us tomorrow by the grace and mercy of the triune God, by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, and just to let you know, I'm just going to have to be upfront and be very forthright and honest. Not that I'm dishonest, but that's one of the reasons why. That's one of the reasons why I don't recommend David Lynn from Canada. So there it is. Yes, if you go to What Do You Meme YouTube channel, you'll see he's announced it. God willing, Lord Jesus willing, Lord Jesus permitting, tomorrow I'll be live. We're going to be taking his objections and by the grace of the Chinese God, refuting them, showing that. He's a heretic who espouses heresies. This is why I don't recommend David Lynn anymore. The reason why I don't recommend David Lynn, because David Lynn <clears throat> tried to give Roger Perkins a platform. He had a conference in which he invited me to speak and then Roger Perkins to speak. And I declined and I said, I will not speak with a heretic there. And you shouldn't be having a heretic because he's an anti-Trinitarian. I'll debate him. And David Lynn tried to make excuses saying, no, he's a Trinitarian. And then turned out he's not a Trinitarian. And David Lynn still did not publicly condemn his heresy, but tried to justify <clears throat> having him come to his conference and try to get people to consider that he may be a Christian. Yep. So, so much for that. I'm, I, I will not, I will not join hands. And I will not be sympathetic to people who are anti-Trinitarians and to Trinitarians who are sympathetic to them. The Trinity is who God is. Any other view <clears throat> is not God. And Roger Perkins is not ignorant. There can be people ignorant about the Trinity, and God has mercy on them. Roger Perkins <clears throat> objects to the Trinity, brings a... <clears throat> arguments and questions to get people to question the Trinity. He is not ignorant. He's an agent of the Satan, of Satan who worships a false God and a false Christ. And until he repents, he is not my brother in Jesus, and I will not be sympathetic or give him a platform. So David Lynn needs to repent and be more zealous and passionate for the glory of the child God. Sorry, guys. I have to be honest. The Trinity should be our passion because the Trinity is God. Three persons, three eternal relationships, one God. We need to be in love with that God, worship that God, live for that God by the power of the Holy Spirit and die for that God. Because he alone is the true God, the God of the Bible, the triune God. So church fathers died as martyrs because they refused to deny the Trinity and refused to be sympathetic to those who claim to be Christian 
but held to false heretical views of the Godhead. And this is a dishonor to their memory, to their blood that they shed for the triune God to say, well, no, you know, it's, you, know you still believe Jesus is God. And, you know, it's just a little, little complex. No, that's an insult. Yeah. So, sorry about that. He is the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Yes, he's right, Christos and Esti. Constantine was an Arian sympathizer. After the Council of Nicaea, he was an Arian who emboldened and empowered the Arians to persecute the Trinitarians, and he died an Arian. He's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. So he's right, Christos and Esti. A lot of people don't know that, right? People don't know that Constantine was not a Trinitarian who defended the Trinity. He became a sympathizer who defended the Arians against the Trinitarians and died pretty much an Arian. He was a heretic. Yep. Anyway, are the mods here? Everyone here? And I hope people on Discord are here, and hopefully we get the regular crowd. Glory to God, the past week we've been getting around 150, 160. For me, that's a lot. But for David Wood, that's nothing. Anyway, God willing, I'm going to probably do a session before David Wood goes live because I don't want to do another session that's too late. So what I'm trying to do until the quarantine is removed, until <clears throat> the government allows us to resume <clears throat> our daily activities, I want to do at least two sessions, if God is pleased, if the Lord Jesus permits, until, you know, government says, hey, coronavirus can't stop it can't do nothing about it go back resume your daily lives and if you get it pray to jesus christ that either heals you or that be your chariot to enter his presence as long as you know jesus are in love with jesus wash in the blood of jesus born of his spirit hallelujah let's go home and worship jesus face to face so i, I so i think i'll do a session you sure who is the one i'm refuting tomorrow first and last well, that's even worse, Marcus Rogers. They're both the same. So tomorrow I'll be refuting Roger Perkins or Marcus Rogers. So thank you for clarifying that. See, that to me, they're all the same. They're all heretics. Nonetheless, they're anti-Trinitarians. So it is Marcus Rogers. Where did I get Rogers Perkins, Roger Perkins from? So tomorrow, what do you mean? Who am I refuting? What anti-Trinitarian modalist heretic am I refuting? Is it Marcus Rogers or Roger Perkins? Because they're both anti-Trinitarian modalist heretics, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So too many Rogers for my taste. Oh, so it is the same person. So guys, thank my brother first and last. Thank the Lord Jesus for the Holy Spirit either just bringing it to my recollection or using my brother's sisters to correct me because we trust Holy Spirit to save me from error. Mar Marcus Rogers. But Roger Perkins is an anti-Trinitarian modalist heretic like Marcus Rogers. And it was Marcus Rogers that David Lynn was giving a platform to teach at his conference, to give him credibility, and whom on his Facebook page he tried <clears throat> to make it seem like he is not really a heretic because David Lynn needs to repent. And I hope he watches my videos. I don't care you went to jail. You got Joe's witnesses who go to jail for their false god. You got Muslims who go to jail for their false god. That doesn't make you a hero, and it doesn't make you a Christian especially when you sympathize with anti-Trinitarian heretics instead of acknowledging your sin and repenting of it. Lord Jesus, chasten and shame you, David Lynn, into repentance. I'm sorry. You don't do that. You don't give a platform to such a people. So it is Marcus Rogers, and that was the man that David Lynn invited to his conference. And I said, I'm not coming if you have him. The only way I'm going to come to Canada and teach is if you set up a debate so I can expose him and his false god. Steadfast, what do you say if I block you for asking me that question? Steadfast 1611, what do you think? What do you say if I block you for asking me that question? What do you think, Steadfast? What do you th what do you say if I block you for that? Just wanna, well, I want to hear what you got to say to that. So here I am saying we need to be passionate about the triune God, passionate about the Father, Son, and Spirit being three eternal persons, three eternal relationships, eternally existing in fellowship and love and communion before creation existed. And you're telling me, what would I say with someone who's, a, who's not a modalist but denies the Trinity? I want to hold his hand, 
We're going to go to church together, take communion, and sing praises to the Lord. What kind of question is that, Steadfast? What kind of question is that? Oh, so you, you're not a modalist, but you deny the Trinity. Hey, brother, come here. In fact, I got a sister that wants to marry you. Come on, let's pray. All right. Are you serious and ask me that question, brother? Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man's a man that grins. All right. All right. How do you honestly, how do you answer that question? Yeah, see, what do you do? He's he's not a modalist, but he dies a church. Brother, where you been? Let's start a church together. We can be co-pastors. Yeah, let's take communion, man. As long as you're not a modalist, it's okay you deny the Trinity. Don't ever insult me like that, brother. Please, steadfast. Don't be steadfast and think twice before asking such a question. Where is the love? I wait for a few minutes, Isaac. Don't rush me, brother. Don't rush me. I've made that mistake before. These are worldly songs. May the Lord save me from them. I'm waiting for the regulars to show up and the modem to warm up so it doesn't buffer. Okay? That's why I wait for a few minutes, Isaac, because it's sometimes the modem takes a few minutes to, to warm up so it doesn't buffer and makes me want to lose my testimony and waiting for the regulars to show up. Don't rush me. I made the mistake before. Uh, these are worldly songs that the Lord sanctify us from. Okay? Father, we love you. <clears throat> I pray that you give us the power of the Holy Spirit to love you perfectly and love you more because we cannot love you enough. Lord Jesus, we love you. Lord, transform us to become like you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> and the way you worship the Father on earth in the power of the Holy Spirit, to walk in union with the Spirit as you did when you were on earth, as an example for us, what we can do. If we yield to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to fill us the way he filled you when you're on earth, Lord Jesus. Give us the power to not only love you the way you deserve to be loved, Lord Jesus, but to love each other the way you love us. To be patient with each other as you're patient with me. Help me in that area, Lord Jesus. And put grace and love in the hearts of my brothers and sisters to pray for me, to know that I'm a sinner. I truly am. A maggot. A worm. Less than nothing. <clears throat> that un unless you save me from myself and cover me by your blood, Lord Jesus, and fill me with your spirit, I deserve to be thrown into the pit of hell <clears throat> because it's by your grace, your mercy, your love, your righteousness, your blood that we can be worthy enough to enter the presence of the Father. So, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. Save us from our own flesh and the fruits of the flesh. Fill us with the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, life from the Spirit, power from the Spirit, Lord Jesus. Not just to preach your word, but to live your word, to love your word. <clears throat> Even die for your word, Lord Jesus. The Bible is your voice to us. Please, Lord Jesus, fill us. Holy Spirit, fill us. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Loosen my tongue. Save me from stammering confusion. Save me from misinterpretation. And Holy Spirit, just fill everyone who listens to these sessions. Those who are here, bring more to the live stream. And those who will listen in the future, use my meager, imperfect efforts and this channel to magnify the name of Jesus so that Jesus will increase in us, Holy Spirit, by your power. So we can love Jesus more and become more like Jesus. And Holy Spirit, give us the health we need to glorify Jesus in the way we live and the holiness to delight the heart of Jesus Christ. Save us from attacks of the enemy, from distractions, and please bless the connection. And Holy Spirit, Please, not only do you give us biological life, you give us spiritual life, mental life, emotional life. You are the one who gives us wholeness, shalom, the shalom of the Father, the shalom, the peace of the Lord Jesus, to make us whole. So I pray you make us whole spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. And I pray for our loved ones, my angels, Lord Jesus, my angels, Holy Spirit, Father, my angels, Holy Spirit, watch over our family in my case my daughters even their mother have mercy holy spirit those who are with me their their parents or their spouses or their siblings or their children or their grandchildren whoever in their family that needs you especially for salvation fill them holy spirit please and make us give us the power to be your hands and feet make us the salt of the earth and the light of the world and teach us how to pray how to obey, how to live, how to worship, how to love, how to fear our God and protect us from fears, doubts, unbelief. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you, Father. We need you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' almighty name, we all the Father.
Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha, heal us and protect us and shield us in Jesus' name. Yahovah bless us. Oh boy. Okay, TBL, I will do that. I'm going to now finish, hopefully, this session, that Facebook exchange where a Jehovah Witness presented some arguments against the Trinity because a brother in the Lord Jesus sent me a link asking me to write a response. And as I said, and I'm going to repeat it again, I will not write written responses. So don't text me or email me asking me to respond via written medium because I don't have time to answer every objection because these objections are not new. These objections are common. They've been raised against the Trinity for the past 2,000 years, and mightier men of God and women of God, smarter than I, holier than I, more in love with Jesus than me. And I don't say that with, with pride. I'm ashamed. I want to love Jesus completely and wholeheartedly and be like them for the glory of Christ, have answered these objections. Moreover, I've answered these objections since I went into full-time ministry in 1999. And as you're going to see, the questions that are raised, if you go and search my YouTube channel, I have sessions over an hour long, sometimes two hours long, addressing these objections and thoroughly refuting them by the grace of the Holy Spirit. And if you go to answeringislam.net and find my articles, go to individual authors, look for Sam Shimon, or answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, these objections have been answered ad nauseum ad infinitum. There's nothing new under the sun. These objections have been refuted. So here is my advice to every one of you. Before you ask me a question, search the website, search the blog or my YouTube channel. See if I've already addressed it. Study the material. Pass the link to the articles or the session. Upload them to your channels. Right. Disseminate this information. Learn Make these arguments second nature so that you can then recall this information and use it for the glory of the triumph God. All right? So may the triumph God be glorified in and through all of us, not just me, and use us as their hands and their feet for the glory of Jesus Christ. Right? So with that said, Sa El Nom. I always like this guy's name. Sa El Nom. Okay? Let's read. Okay? Now, guys, let me know. Where's the phone? Because I got to read the email. And I'm hoping it doesn't buffer. If it buffers, first and the last, Protestant, text me on my phone saying, hey, you're buffering. Because I can't look at the screen and read. Let me read it and we're going to respond. We're going to use the Jehovah Witness Bible this time around, right? By the grace of the Lord Jesus. Jehovah Jesus. Only the lonely know I, I cry. Only the lonely. Only the lonely. No, I cry, I cry beside only the lonely. There goes my baby. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to get in the gym. I haven't been in the gym in two months, but I'm going to get my muscles, my shoulders, flatten up my stomach. But man, from before, I've lost a lot of weight. Glory to God. And I got 50 more to go. The weight I lose, David Wood has picked up. Right. Only the lonely. No, uh, hold on. I am live right now. Sorry about that. Only the lonely. Only the lonely. All right. All right. Are we ready? Okay. So my phone is here. Hopefully it won't buffer. I'll put it on the floor. Hey, Mike, what's up, Michael? Yo, let's read. Well, I'm going to continue from where I left off. This is part two. That means I did a part one. You crazy? Have you seen David now? He's got a chin and his belly is bigger than ever before. Stop hating, AD. Stop trying to defend your fellow white men. You white folks give a give a bad name for white people and you justify the black Hebrew Israelites' hatred of the white man. You Edomite. All right, anyway. Let's go here. Let's read. Let me read it. You ready? Okay, here it is. Let's pick up. Guy. This is some unknown guy who's supposedly a Trinitarian. So I'm reading it. This was sent to me from a Facebook posting and was sent to me to my email account. God and Jesus are the same. Me, I don't know, I don't know who the me is. I guess the Jehovah Witness, unnamed Jehovah Witness. Can you please show me a scripture 
that shows they are equal or the same? Are you referring to John 10, 30? And now look, the argument's so devastating that here's the Christian response. Here's guy's response, the Christian response. Silent. <gasps> he went silent. Can you show me where it says Jesus and God are equal or the same? Are you referring to John 10, 30? And the Trinitarian is shocked. The guy who's supposed to be the Trinitarian, this unnamed guy, couldn't be a gal, had to be a guy, went silent. He got me. <gasps> Ooh, I need to now become a Jehovah Witness. Oh. All right, now let's hear his answer. Now the Jehovah Witness is responding, me. In order to know the deeper meaning, <laughs> in order to know <laughs> the deeper meaning, we got the deeper meaning. In order to know the deeper meaning of John 10.30, we need to read the successive paragraphs. John 10.30 actually means unity in purpose. Jesus and God are united in purpose, not in essence. John 17.21 says, I pray that they are one, just you, Father, and I are one. So being one means equal or the same, then it is saying that all disciples are equal and the same. And you know that is not true. Trinitarian busted. Oh, that's it. I'm ready to go to the kingdom hall and get baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit anointed organization. Okay, are we ready now? Are we ready to refute this? Okay, let me let me repeat the objection and by the way it's ironic i already addressed this in one of my previous sessions about maybe a month ago okay here is the objection <clears throat> when jesus says i and the father are one it doesn't mean one in nature it means one in purpose because jesus uses that word one to describe the relationship of the apostles <clears throat> with one another let's look at john 17 21 okay and now we're going to re refute it you know John 17, 21. Let's look at it. Let's break it down. And then they mention John 17, 3. The same passage is over and over again. It's tiring. It really is tiring. In order that they may all be one, that they may all be one, believers, disciples in Jesus, disciples of Jesus, may they all be one, right? Okay. Just as you, Father, are in me, are in union with me. And I am in union with you, that they also may be in union with us, in order that the world may believe that you sent me forth. So now notice this. The disciples are all one. Does that mean they are one person? Does that mean they're the same person? No, it means that they're united in their purpose, in their mission. One in purpose. Therefore, when Jesus says, I and the Father are one, that doesn't mean Jesus and the Father are the same person. It means they are one in purpose. They're united in their purpose and their will. Okay, that's the objection. Now, are you ready for me to respond to that? Are you ready for me to respond to that? Now, here's why I laughed. Yes, okay, Abdullah Aman is here too. Good. Guys, this man keeps coming to my channel to learn about the Trinity. In the last session, Abdullah Aman, a Muslim, said, so the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, says Jehovah will become a man. He got it. It's clicking. The Holy Spirit is <clears throat> illuminating his mind. The light switch went on by the power of the Holy Spirit. So pray for him and Andrew Griffin. Holy Spirit will bring them to the true God, to the feet of Jesus. So praise God. Now, and notice he said, even Ahmadidat brings up this argument. Even Ahmadidat brings up this argument. Abdullah, you're going to be blessed. See, God brought you again. Talk about the Spirit bringing people. To hear the truth. He's here to listen now to an objection even raised by Ahmadidat, a Muslim debater, and now he's going to hear the refutation to that objection. Glory to the triune God. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Lord Jesus. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Talk about God working and bringing about the salvation of people. And that's what it's about. The Holy Spirit brings them and raises up teachers to teach them. Now, with that said, are we ready now to respond to this? Now, here's what's ironic about that Facebook exchange. He goes, let me unpack the deeper meaning of John 10, 30. Let's unpack it. Now, let's see what Jesus meant when he said, I and the Father one. Did he mean, I am one with the Father in purpose, or I am one with the Father in power, 
and ability and nature and essence. Let's see. John 10, 27 to 28. We're just going to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove our case. If you want to get blessed and excited and blown away, this is when you need to give me your undivided, undivided attention for the glory of the triumph God. Okay? Listen, guys. And don't focus on Abdullah. Pray for him. And you focus on learning how to give responses to these objections. Okay, John 10, 27, 28 from the Jehovah's Witness Bible. My sheep listen to my voice. Notice, my sheep listen to... See, that's what I told you. It's going to buffer. Is it back? I don't know. It's buffering for me. Are you sure? It keeps buffering for me. It kept buffering for me. I didn't see it. So that means I had to refresh. Okay. See, this is the problem. I don't know why. It, even though it's 99% better than it was, I still don't understand why it keeps buffering here and there. May the Lord Jesus crush the head of Satan and give us victory over against him by the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. All right, John 10, 27, 28 again. Oh, my goodness. No, that's people downstairs, Christos and Esti. We got neighbors, and I can't tell them to be silent. In fact, I'm being too loud. Yeah, why don't you go get yourself seven cats, okay? Protestant, I like dogs. I don't like cats. You go get you seven cats. Anyway, John 10, 27, 28. Okay, read with me. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, okay? And I give them everlasting life, and they will by no means ever be destroyed, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Okay, guys, here's where I need your undivided attention. Don't let Satan distract us like he's trying to do. We got the victory in Jesus. Notice what Jesus said. This is the Jehovah Witness translation, okay? My sheep hear my voice. Let's post it one more time so you can see it. Okay. Tell me, Satan's trying to distract me in Jesus' name. Lord, you don't need me. I need you. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep, my voice. My sheep, my voice. Now notice 28. You put 27 again. Uh-oh. Here we go with the shutdown. Protestant is now starting to get the Alzheimer's. It's kicking in. My sheep listen to my voice. I give them everlasting life. They will by no means ever be destroyed, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Okay, now, guys, focus. Focus here. Jesus says they are my sheep. They hear my voice. They're in my hand. Okay? That's what I want you to focus on. My sheep. In my voice, I'm sorry, in my hand, hear my voice as Holy Spirit protects us from error. They are my sheep. Believers are my sheep. They hear my voice. They're in my hand. And I give them everlasting life. Okay, let's go to Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Watch here. Oh, I like Protestant. I did. I'm giving two versions. I don't want just one version of Joe's Witness Bible. <laughs> Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Watch here. Yeah, poor guy, he can't. I'm in his life to increase his blessings. Because the more I torture him and the more he endures, the greater his blessing. So I'm actually helping him receive greater blessings. Psalm 95, 6 to 8. Guys, read. Oh, come in. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Jehovah, our maker. Let's see if you caught it. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pastor, pasturage. The sheep of his hand, today a few people listen to his voice. Do not harden your heart. Wait, wait, did you hear that? I don't, I don't, I don't think you caught it. We are the sheep of Jehovah's hand, the sheep in Jehovah's hand, and it is his voice we're supposed to hear. But Jesus said, they're my sheep. They hear my voice. They're in my hand. They're the sheep in my hand who hear my voice. Psalm 95, 68 says, believers are Jehovah's sheep. In Jehovah's hand, the sheep in Jehovah's hand, and they hear Jehovah's voice. 
And what does it mean? God bless you, Mas. In his hand, hand means protection. Hand means protection. Hand means protection. Okay? Hand means protection. They are under his care, under his protection, under his power. Everyone with me there? You getting it or no? Everyone understand that? Before I move on, if you're not understanding, I can't move on. So what does it mean to be the sheep in his hand? Meaning under his care, under his preservation, under his power, under his protection. So the psalmist says, believers are the sheep in Jehovah's hand, and they are to hear his voice. Jesus said, they are my sheep who hear my voice in my hand. Everyone got that? That's the first connection. The second connection. Jesus says in John 10, 28, John 10, 28, I give them everlasting life and no one can snatch them out of my hand. No one can pluck them out of my hand. No one can take them out of my hand. I, I personally give them everlasting life. I do it. I give them that life. And no one can deliver them, pluck them, take them out of my hand. No one can destroy any of my sheep because I preserve them forever. Okay, now let's see Deuteronomy 32, 39. Deuteronomy 32, 39, if you guys are getting it. If you're paying attention, you're going to get this. Deuteronomy 32, 39. None can deliver out of my hand. None can pluck them out of my hand. None can snatch them out of my hand because I'm almighty to save. And there is no power that can rival me and stop me from preserving them forever. And I give them everlasting life. Not just life, life that never ends. See now that I, I am he and there are no gods together with me. I put to death and I make alive. I have severely wounded and I will heal. And there is no one snatching out of my hand. Oh, wow. Wait, 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 wait. Let's put that. Let's put Deuteronomy 32, 39 back to back with John 10, 28. And thank the mods. Thank Protestant for helping me to help you. Watch here. Watch here. This is a Jehovah's Witness Bible, by the way. This is a Jehovah's Witness Bible. Hold on. Watch here. <clears throat> Read with me. Okay. See now that I am he, and there are no gods together with me. I put to death. I make alive. I have severely wounded, and I, I will heal. And there's no one snatching out of my hand. Notice Jesus. And I give them everlasting life, and they will by no means ever be destroyed, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Jesus, who do you think you are? The Old Testament says this is something only Jehovah can say. Only Jehovah can give life let alone everlasting life. And you give everlasting life. And no one can snatch out of Jehovah's hand because he's the only one who's almighty. There is no one who can say that because everyone else is not almighty. Everyone else is limited, finite in their power. But because Jehovah is all powerful, there is no power equal to his, let alone greater than his, which is why he can ensure because he's almighty, no one can take anything out of his hand. But Jesus, you just said that about yourself. Hey, you filthy dog, son of Satan. You're going to burn in hell with your prophet if you don't repent. Get this dog out of here. Okay. You caught it there? Did you catch what Jesus said? Jehovah is the shepherd. Believers are the sheep in his hand. They are to hear his voice. Jesus says, I'm the shepherd. They are my sheep. In my hand, they hear my voice. Jehovah says, here's the here's proof that I alone am God. I alone give life, and there is no one that can snatch out of my hand. Jesus says, I'm the one who not only gives life, but never-ending life, immortal life to all believers, and there's no one that can snatch them out of my hand. Jesus, who do you think you are? Isaiah 43, 10 to 11. Let's read Isaiah 43, 10 to 13. Isaiah 43, 10 to 13. Because I was going to skip 12. But watch here. Watch here. Watch what's going to happen. Watch here, guys. 
You are my witnesses, is the utterance of Jehovah, when even my servant, whom I have chosen, in order that you may know and have faith in me, and that you may understand that I am the same one. Before me, there was no God form, and after me, there continued to be none. I, I am Jehovah, and besides me, there is no Savior. I myself have told, have told forth, has have saved, I have saved, I have caused it to be heard. When there was among you no strange God, so you are my witnesses, is the utterance of Jehovah, and I am God. Now notice verse 13. Also, all the time I am the same one, and there is no one effecting deliverance out of my hand. I shall get active, and who can turn it back? No one can take out of my hand again, and I'm the one who saves to the uttermost, and no one can take out of my hand. But Jesus said that about himself. Who is Jesus claiming to be? Now let's read 10, 29 to 30. 10, 29 to 30. Watch here. 10, 29 to 30. As he posts it. So thank the Lord for him and his patience. It's not easy to copy and paste, man. Sometimes YouTube get, makes it very hard. So I'm not saying anything because if I say this guy is losing it and he needs medication, I said, John 10, 29, 30, he put Isaiah. So, but I didn't say anything. I didn't take a shot. That old age is kicking in, right? I didn't say that, you know, he keeps dropping the ball. And because, you know, it, it does take a lot of effort and time to do this. So I didn't say anything. I said, John 10, 29, 30, but in his mind, he heard Isaiah. See, but I didn't attack him. See, I'm being nice. How do you get an I from a J? John and Isaiah, and they don't even sound anything. John 10, 29, 30. Let's read now. John 10, 29, 30. Okay. <laughs> Let's read. Okay, pay attention by the grace of Jesus. John 10, 29, 30. What my father has given me is something greater than all other things. No one can snatch them out of the hand of the father. I and the Father one. That's the context. Do you guys see the context? Do you see the context? I give them everlasting life. They shall never be destroyed. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. No one can snatch them out of my hand because I and the Father are one. Now, the word in Greek, are there, you won't see it in your English, but let me show you what the Greek word is. Here it is. Thank the Lord for modern technology. That's free. Here you go. John 1030. I want you to see for yourself so you don't take my word for it. Okay. Magdalena, we're, we're talking about John 10, 27 to 30, showing that Jesus is God in the flesh, one with the Father. So if you want... Start from the beginning and work your way up to the, the moment, right? Okay, now, here you go. First slide, just post the Greek. Ego, kai, or ke, a pater, o a pater, hen, esmen. If you click on the link, you'll see the Greek transliterated. You'll see the word esmen. And when you look at esmen, it is a verb, Right? That is plural. It is plural. Literally, what Jesus said, or what John writes in Greek, if Jesus didn't say it in Greek, Jesus may have said it in Aramaic or Hebrew, but literally, John, John says, I and the Father, we are one. Esmen means we are, proving they're not the same person. It's plural. Father and I, we're not the same person. We are. We're more than one person, but we are one. One not in our personhood. We're not one person. We are one in our power. We are one in our ability. We are one in nature because it requires the power of God to ensure the everlasting preservation and to ensure the impossibility of the destruction of all believers. Only someone that's all-powerful could ensure that. But that's what Jesus said about himself and the Father. I myself give them everlasting life. 
No one can snatch them out of my hand. They can never be destroyed. Well, who do you think you are? For you to make that claim, Jesus, you're saying there is no power in all creation. If even all creation comes together, they cannot stop you from preserving all believers, and they cannot snatch believers from your power of protection. You're saying that's impossible. They can't do it. Well, the only way that can be impossible is if there is no power in creation that rivals your power, let alone is greater than your power. That means everything in creation is subject to your power. But for you to be able to subject all creation and guarantee the everlasting preservation of all believers means you must be almighty. Right? Now, I understand no one can touch them out of the Father's hand because the Father is almighty. But how could you say that about yourself if you're a creature? How could you say that about yourself if the Jehovah's Witnesses are right? You're a God, lowercase g. How can you say that about yourself if you're the Archangel Michael? And Jesus says, who told you I'm a lowercase g God? Who told you I'm a creature? Who told you I'm the Archangel Michael? I am the eternal son, the almighty son, almighty to save, who's not the Father, but I'm one with the Father in power, ability, and nature. That's what Jesus just said. That's what he just said. You catch it? That's what he just said. That's why the Jews who knew their Old Testament correctly reasoned, this is a man claiming to be God, but where they were wrong, they thought he was blaspheming. Because now let's read their reaction. John 10, 31, 33. Now here the Jews' witnesses butcher 33. They butcher 33. Watch what they do to 33. They butcher it. But that's okay. Because you ask them a question. John 10, 31, 33. Protestant brother, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting hurt for you, bro. You are really dropping the ball today. Are you tired, man? Maybe you worked late, real late last night. Because for some reason, John 10, 31 ended up becoming 32. So there was no 31. Brother, you want it? You want it? It's okay. You can take a break because I don't want to overwork you. You don't get paid. I want to be gentle on you, brother. I mean, you just downloaded an entire YouTube channel to upload to my YouTube channel. I mean, I can't ask for more, but you're hurting, brother. You're hurting bad. And you're hurting me because you're hurting. And I want to come and hurt you more. All right. John 10, 31 to 33. God bless you too, Carly. John 10, 31 to 33. Right, mate? Pedro? Junior, <laughs> hey, first and last, stop trying to defend yourself from dropping the ball yesterday by making the same excuse for Protestant. Okay, first and last. All right, let me see if I can get it. Let me see if I can get it. Guys, don't, don't be surprised we have these technical difficulties. All joking aside, believe me when I tell you, all joking aside, believe me when I tell you, this is all spiritual warfare. These little... Nicks, these little uh, you know quirks, these distractions are deliberately designed by the evil one to distract us so we don't focus on the glory of the triumph God. I know we're joking about it. See it what it is. It's not a coincidence when you want to go in-depth in the scriptures and unveil the glory of the true God and unpack the meat of the Bible. You're going to get distractions, either buffering, or you're going to have dogs of the devil come in barking and blaspheming, or these quirk. It's all spiritual. But that's a good sign. You know why that's a good sign? That means Satan is angry because we're glorifying Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyway, it's not posting. Now you tell me why John 10, 31 won't show up. Oh, oh we love you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We are in sinful bodies that need to be transformed by the spirit bodies that wear out and tire and fatigue. So our strength and our power energies from you, the triumph God, father, son, Holy spirit. Yeah. Protestant, you can keep posting John 10, 33 over and over again, but that doesn't help because 31 doesn't show up. So here you go. Okay. Here, here's the link to their online Bible. Here it is. Here's the link to their online Bible. No, no world translation. Let me get the verses for you. Bear with us because these are all attacks of the enemy, but that's a good sign. That means he's angry.
because we're glorifying Jesus. And may Jesus give us the health we need. Strengthen my heart, my chest, my lungs, my throat for his glory. Here you go. Here's the link because I'm going to just read it from here because he keeps posting John 10, 33, but 31 and 32. 32 showed up, but 31 didn't. Okay, there's the link. Thank you, Pastor Leland. The Lord Jesus bless you, preserve you, and fill you. This is my former pastor, Pastor Leland Johnson. I, I received that, and Jesus shine his face on you, use you mightily. Satan hates Sam Shimon and would, look not, would like nothing better than to see Sam somehow hindered or put out of service. But by your prayers and by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, and the filling of the Spirit, he will lose. He will not win against us because that goes back to the prom of, promise of Jesus. If I am his sheep who hear his voice and I'm in his hand, no one can snatch me out of his hand. No one can destroy me because I belong to him. You belong to him. We are indestructible because of Jesus Almighty. Okay, John 10, 31 to 33. Let's focus now. John 10, 31, 33, it showed up. 31 showed up. Then the Jews took up stones against to stone him. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. So that came through. God bless our brother Protestant. 32 and 33. 32 and 33. Okay, go ahead. It's okay. King James. If the king ain't on it, the king ain't in it. 32, 33. Okay. King ain't on it, king ain't in it. Come on now. 32, 33. Jesus replied to them, I displayed to you many fine works from the Father. For which of those works are you stoning me? So they want to stone him. Which works, good works that I did, you want to stone me? Notice the answer. The Jews answered him, we are stoning you not for a fine work. We're not stoning you for the good works you've done, but for blasphemy. Even because you, although being a man, make yourself a God. Here's what I call the lowercase g syndrome. The lowercase g syndrome. Notice how they translated the Greek. They have Jesus claiming to be a God. Now let's compare it with the King James. John 10, 33. John 10, 33. Yeah, they have no shame. But now let's look at John 10, 33 in the King James Version. And then I'm going to show you how to use their perversion against them. Watch here. Now here's where you're going to put the Jehovah Witness in a dilemma and a trap he can't come out of. She can't come out of. Now let's look at John 10, 33 in the King James. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Yeah, now notice the Jews realize this flesh and blood Jew, this human being, is claiming to be God. Now, here is where I need you to listen. Please listen, because I want you to get this. Even though I did a session on this not too long ago, but again, when we hear something over and over again, it becomes second nature by the grace of God's Spirit, right? Over and over again, becomes second nature by the grace of God's Spirit. So listen. The Jews realize this Jew in front of us, this flesh and blood human being, is claiming to be God. Why did they... Realize that because of what Jesus said. They knew the Old Testament. When they heard Jesus say, they are my sheep in my hand, hear my voice, they would have realized, wait, that's Psalm 95. Even though they didn't have chapter divisions, but they would know, hey, that's the Psalm. The Psalm says, Israel is the sheep of Jehovah's hand where to hear Jehovah's voice. And then when they heard him say, I give them everlasting life. No one can snatch them out of my hand. The other thing that came to mind, wait, that's the Torah of Moses. What well, we know as Deuteronomy 32, 39. That's what Jehovah said to show that he alone is God, that he makes alive. And yet this man says he gives everlasting life. And Jehovah says none can snatch out of his hand. And this Jew says none can snatch out of his hand. By golly, this guy is claiming to be God. You see? So the Jews correctly realize this man is claiming to be God. So where were they wrong in thinking he's just a man and therefore blaspheming? You with me? That's where they were wrong. You're just a man, so you're blaspheming. And Jesus' point, no, I'm not just a man. I'm God who became man. Let the miracles convince you. The miracles I'm doing should convince you I'm not just a mere man. I'm more than a man. I'm the unique son one with the Father in essence, and therefore God in the flesh. 
So they're right in assuming he's claiming to be God, but they're wrong in assuming all he is is a man. Everyone got that so far? You everyone got that so far? So you ask the Jehovah Witness, in your translation, and this is where I need you to listen so you can turn against them. In your translation, in your translation, you have Jesus claiming to be the Son of God, and the Jews assuming he's making himself to be a God, not God Almighty, but a God, lowercase g, right? That's what your translation says, yes, right? They'll say yes. Ask them this question. Say, can I ask you a question? According to the Old Testament, how many gods give life? How many gods have the power to make sure no one can snatch out of their hands? They'll tell you only one, Jehovah. So ask them the question. Now, remember the question. Uh, Mr. Witness or Miss Witness, according to the Old Testament, how many gods are there that gives life? And they're going to know the Old Testament because of the passages we cited. Only one. Who is he? Jehovah. How many gods can say no one can snatch out of their hands? They'll say only one, Jehovah. So then why do you have Jesus claiming to be a God when you just admit what Jesus said only Jehovah can say? Only Jehovah can say, I give everlasting life. Jesus said that. Only Jehovah can say, none can snatch out of my hand. Jesus said that. So then how dare you make him a lowercase g God? You see what I just did? So what kind of God was Jesus claiming to be? A God or God Almighty, Jehovah. Jehovah. But he's not the Father, is he? Because he's the Father's Son. And yet the Father is Jehovah. So let's do the math. The Father's Jehovah, and Jesus makes claims that only Jehovah can claim. So Jesus claims to be Jehovah, but he's not the Father, he's the Son. But there's only one Jehovah. Nehemiah 9, verse 6. Nehemiah Chapter 9, verse 6. How many Jehovah's are there? And dear, you got it now, yes. Exactly, meet. Okay. Nehemiah 9, verse 6. Watch here. Thou, even thou art Lord alone. No, why would you go to the King James when you want to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible? Unless it's not posting, Protestant. Stick with the, new, the Jehovah Witness Bible unless you can't post it. Okay? Now, my 9, verse 6. Let's try it again. Man, brother, I really, I got to I gotta come live in your territory and maybe just, you know, do home care for you and put you in and get you soup. You are Jehovah alone. How many Jehovahs are there? You are Jehovah alone. Two Jehovahs, three Jehovahs. You are Jehovah alone. You yourself have made the heavens. Even the heaven of the heavens and all their army, the earth and all that is upon it, the seas and all that is in them. And you are preserving all of them alive and the army of the heavens are bowing down to you. You are Jehovah alone. But wait, Jesus just claimed the very power, the very prerogatives that only Jehovah can claim. He speaks as if he's Jehovah. And yet Jesus is not the father and the father is Jehovah. And the Father honors Jesus and vindicates Jesus' claims by the miracles that Jesus does. So Jesus isn't lying, and he's not blaspheming because the Father's amening the Son. Amen, Son. That's who you are. How do we know the Father's amening the Son? Giving his seal approval? Yep. Whatever my Son says, believe it because it's absolutely true. John 10, 37 to 38. Yeah, that's the New World Translation, 1984 edition. Christus and SD. I just gave you the link to their site, right? John 10, 37, 38. Yeah, Christos and SD. Are we going to go over this again, brother? You exist to sanctify me. The other day when we were doing this, Christos and SD, you asked the same question and you got the same answer. They're using the 1984 edition. What do you think changed in two days? Do you think a, a fresh translational witness dropped from Mars? You were told the other day. <laughs> okay. But if I am doing them, even though you do not believe, John 10, 37 to 38, if I am not doing the works of my Father, okay, 
if, if I am not doing the works of my father, do not believe me. If I am not doing the works of my father, do not believe me. Don't believe what I, my claims. Don't believe my claim that I give everlasting life to the sheep. They're in my hand. No one can destroy them. No one can pluck them out of my hand. I guarantee their everlasting possession, and I'm one with the Father. Everlasting preservation. As the Holy Spirit loosens my tongue. If you don't believe the claims, then he says in 1037, if I'm not doing the works of my Father, don't believe me. But if I'm doing them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works in order that you may come to know and may continue knowing that the Father is in union with me and I'm in union with the Father. In other words, let my actions do the talking. Actions speak louder than words. The miracles that you see me doing, raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, healing the par par paralytic, those are miracles showing you the Father is in me, working through me, vindicating me, and giving me his amen to everything I'm saying. So the Father is saying, amen, son, that's who you are. Amen. You are the shepherd. They do hear your voice, son. They are in your hand. And they can never be destroyed because there's no power that can pluck them out of your hand. Amen, son. Do you see it? See, even Abdullah Aman, pray for him. He's already worshiping Jesus because look what he says. It's a dilemma. He sees it. Glory to the Holy Spirit of the living God. Giving eyes to see and ears to hear to everyone, including Muslims. He's seeing it. See, he goes, it's a dilemma. Chris Christ is almighty. What would that got to do with the point? Father, Son, and Spirit always work together. Always an inseparable, perfect union. So the work of the one is the work of the other. So that's a given. Okay, but now everyone getting this now? What did Jesus say? If I am blaspheming and I'm lying, do you think that the Father would be living in me and doing miracles through me? Miracles as a sign for you that the Father approves of me and is giving me his seal of approval and his divine amen to everything I say? Is that making sense or no? You see what Jesus is saying? Let me give you another example in which Jesus does a miracle as God's sign from heaven to the people on earth. Listen to him. He is my son. He is almighty. He is God in the flesh. And I back up every single word he says. Let me show you another one. Are you ready? Can I give you another example of that? I like what Sam Sample said. Make the like button your faithful... <laughs> Great sleep. <laughs> and by the way, Christos and Esti, I like your comeback. Yeah, you never know, man. They maybe have snuck in another translation. That was pretty good. Let me give you another one. John, from their Bible, from their Bible, John 11, 23 to 27. Watch here. John 11, 23 to 27. Let's try to make this channel go viral. And if you ever want to go to sleep because you have a hard time sleeping, listen to David Wood. John 11, 23 to 27, read. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. This is their Bible, by the way. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Now notice what our Lord says. Abdullah Aman, this is what Jesus said. Listen, Abdullah Aman, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. al Right? I believe that is in Arabic. I'm going by memory. He that exercises faith in me, even though he dies, he will come to life. And everyone that is living and exercising faith in me will never die at all. If you're trusting in Jesus, you will never die at all. Okay. Now, now watch, watch what he goes on to say. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. So, Abdullah Man, Jesus is speaking to you because the Bible is Jesus' voice. Jesus speaks even now through the Bible because he's alive with the Father. And so, Abdullah Man, he even says that to you. He says, Abdullah, do you believe I am the resurrection life, that if you believe in me, you will never die? Do you believe this, Abdullah? 
And your answer should be, if you want to be saved, yes, I believe you're the Christ, the Son of God that came into the world. Not some Muslim prophet, Isa ibn Maryam. Yesu ibn Allah, Habib Allah, huwa Allah. That's the answer. Okay, so who did Jesus claim to be? Jesus claimed to be the resurrection and the life. Now, does the Father back that up? Are you ready now? Let's go to John 11. Let's read 39 to 44. John 11, 39 to 44. Abdullah, pay attention now. Jesus is going to do a miracle to prove what he just said is true. John 11, 39 to 44. Watch here. Jesus said, take the stone away. Remove the stone. Lazarus was dead. Take the stone away. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by now he must smell for it is four days. Now watch here, guys. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Why do you doubt? Just believe and trust in me and you will see the glory and the majesty of God. Now watch. Watch this prayer. Therefore, they took the stone away. Now Jesus raised his eyes heavenward and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Now watch this. 42. True. 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 I knew that you always hear me. Not sometime. Not most of the time. Every time I ask, you hear me right away. That's how powerful I am and how much loved I am by you. You always hear everything I say. So why are you praying then, Jesus? But account, on account of the crowd. I'm not saying this, Father, for my sake. Because you know me and I know you. I know where I came from. And I belong to you. And I know how much you love me. And are in love with me. So why am I saying this? For the crowd. Why am I saying this? For Abdullah Aman. Why am I saying this? For Andrew Griffin. Why am I saying this? For those who don't know the Trinity. I'm saying it for them. True, I knew that you always hear me. But on account of the crowd standing around, I spoke in order that they might believe that you sent me forth. And then 43 and 44. And when he said, he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come on out. The man that had been dead, he was dead four days, came out with his feet and hands bound with wrappings. And his countenance was bound about with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. You see? See what happened here? The father says from heaven, amen, my son. You want Lazarus to come back from the dead as a miraculous proof that you are God in the flesh? My son, my love, one with me, who always gets all his desires because I always delight in answering you because you always please me and make me happy? Summon him, son, so they can know. Come forth, Lazarus. And they saw. Did you catch it? Let me, guys, save this. Look what Abdullah Man just said. This man is on the door of salvation. Pastor Leland, pray for Abdullah Aman. He's a Muslim I've been witnessing to. Look what he just said. Abdullah Aman, this can never be the Muslim Jesus. Guys, rejoice with me. Let me post it again. This can never be the Muslim Jesus. You see how amazing the triune God is? Here, thou shalt not pontificate. Take a shot of that. Scroll up. He just said it. This can never be the Muslim Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the Muslim Jesus doesn't exist. The real Jesus of history, who is the Christ in the New Testament, he exists. You're seeing, folks, you're getting a blessing from the Lord Jesus. You know why? You're getting two things here. You're seeing the force of the arguments, and you're seeing the Holy Spirit use these arguments to penetrate hearts, shaking the foundation of people. Amen, Pedro. Are you seeing it now? That's why you got to keep praying for us on the front lines. Pray for my health. Pray for my holiness. Never to disappoint Jesus, fail Jesus, shame Jesus. Pray for the provision. Pray for, for my family, my daughters. 
Okay. So, folks, can I ask you a question? Hallelujah, Pastor Lynn. Hallelujah. Can I ask you a question? In the context of John 10, 27 to 30, was Jesus saying, I am the Father, one in purpose, one in will, united in purpose? Or are you saying, I and the Father are one in divine power? I am just as powerful as the Father. I am almighty like him. We are one in nature. What was Jesus saying? Is there any doubt that from the context of John 10, Jesus saying, I am one with the Father, not just in purpose, that's a given. Not just united to him in will and purpose. I'm united to him in power and ability to preserve believers incorruptible and destructible. Right? So everyone got that? That's how you answer the misuse of John 10, 30 by Joe's witnesses. Now they ran to John 17, 21. Now let's quote what they did not quote. Let's quote the context from their translation. John 17, we're going to read 20 to 23. Focus on 21 and 22. John 17, 20 to 23. So let's finish that part of the objection. What a blessing it is for the past week. The Lord has, bring, has been bringing me unbelievers on YouTube to show you the power of these arguments by the Holy Spirit to rock them and shake their foundation. Abdullah Man, Andrew Griffin. Okay, now let's read John 17, 20 to 23. What a blessing. John 17, 20 to 23. I make requests not concerning these only. Notice what Jesus says in this prayer but also concerning those putting faith in me through their word in order that they may all be one, just as you father are in union with me and I am in union with you, that they also may be in union with us in order that the world may believe that you sent me forth in union with us. I in union with them and you in union with me in order that they may be perfected into one, that the world may have the knowledge that you sent me forth and that you love them just as you love me. Okay, guys. You see what Jesus said? Hallelujah, Nathaniel. You see what Jesus just said? He said, Father, I'm in union with all believers, and you're in union with me, and because I'm in union with them, they're united to us. I am the key that unites them to us. Okay, folks, can I ask you a question? What kind of qualities must Jesus have to be united to all believers the world over, to be in union with all believers the world over, to be in fellowship with all believers the world over, to be in fellowship with them, in communion with them, having a relationship with them, overseeing them, uniting them, preserving them, and then uniting them to God. What kind of qualities? He must be omnipresent, right? Because how can he be in union with me, have a relationship with me, and fellowship with me, and then in fellowship with Panashili and Christos and Esti when we're scattered all over the world, if Jesus is not omnipresent. Number two, he must be all-powerful because his union guarantees our unity, our preservation, our being united to one another and with God. That means he is the one who unites all of us together and unites all of us with the Father and keeps us together with the Father by His union in us. So wait, Jehovah Witness. Wait, Jehovah Witness. You're telling me this passage is the passage you're using to prove Jesus isn't God? You're quoting this passage to prove Jesus isn't God? A passage where Jesus actually argues for being omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, that he must know who the believers are, where they're at, how many there are, and he must have the ability to be in union with all of them, overseeing all of them, watching over all of them, and perfectly uniting them together and with him and the Father.
Exactly, Nara. Let me repeat what she said. Christianity enjoys two kinds of unity. With God, with one another, the latter being rooted in the former. So isn't it ironic the very passage that they cite ends up proving that Jesus is God Almighty, one with the Father, because he possesses the divine attributes of omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence? Let me show you John 14, 20 to 21. And this is their translation, Pedro. Their translation. John 14, 20 to 21. Exactly, first and last. A perversion of the original languages of Scripture. John 14, 20, 21. In that day you will know that I am in union with my Father, and you are in union with me, and I am in union with you. Wait, wait. And that day, Jesus, I'm going to know that you're in union with all believers? But, Lord, there are millions and millions of believers the world over. You're saying you are united to every one of them. You're connected to every one of them. You're in fellowship with every one of them. And that you are our connection to God. Who do you think you are, Jesus? He that has my commandments and observes them, that one is he who loves me. In turn, he that loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and will plainly show myself to him. Okay, now guys, can, I, can you help me understand? Jesus says, whoever obeys my commandments, he loves me. And if you obey my commandments and prove that you love me, I will come to you. Live with you and love you. I will love you. Okay, guys, help me understand this. How can Jesus make such a claim that I will come and be with everyone who truly loves me and I will love every one of them? How can he do that? How can he be with me if I love him, dwelling with me here, but then dwelling with Hafsa there, and first and last over there? And How can he make such a claim? Doesn't this assume he must be omniscient? He must know this one is a true believer. He, command, he, he obeys my command. That one is a fake believer. He doesn't love me. She doesn't love me. So the one who loves me, I'm not going to live with him. But then that person loves me too. I'm going to live with him and with her. and him. I'm going to live with all of them at the same time. How? How can you do that, Jesus? How can you do that, Jesus? Because he's not a creature, he's God Almighty, he's omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. And then John 14, 23, to put the icing on the cake, as Revelation 22, 13 referred to. You got it, Luisa. But according to Joe's witnesses, he's just a creature. Okay, John 14, 23. In answer, Jesus said to him, if anyone loves me, he will observe my word and my father will live him. Now watch this. This is their own translation. We shall come to him and make our abode with him. Jesus, who do you think you are? God the Father is Jehovah Almighty. He can be with me and live with me because he's omnipresent, omniscient. So he'll know if I'm a true believer or not. And if I'm a true believer, he'll live with me. But you just said, it's not just the Father. I and the Father together will join you. I and the Father together will live in your home. I and the Father together will make you our home and make your home our abode. I am with you to the same extent, to the same degree that the Father is. And you're telling me Jesus is not one with the Father. Okay. No, no. Only one in purpose. Only united in, in purpose. That's all he is. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is just one in purpose. He's not one in essence. Is it sinking in? Is it sinking in? So, hey, John 10, 30, Jesus is just one in purpose, like John 17, 21. And yet they have the audacity to think they're going deep into the text. They have the audacity to think they're going deep into the text. Wow. Now, I'm going to real quickly answer John 17, 3, but I got to do a part three on this. Because I want to devote an entire session on John 17, 3 in responding to the Joe Witness. Even though, Lord willing... You can go back to my YouTube session. I've done talks on John 17.3 on my YouTube session, previous talks. And I have articles on John 17.3 on my website and the blog. But I'm going to do one anyway in answer to this one. Real quickly, John 17, verse 3, a real quick way of responding to it. 
John 17, verse 3. Real quickly, and I'll open up briefly, or maybe I'll just, okay, well, let's just do this. John 17, verse 3. That means everlasting life. They're taking in knowledge of you, the only true God, and one of the and of the one whom you sent forth, Jesus Christ. So now, guys, pay attention. Their argument is Jesus said the Father is the only true God and that he was sent by the only true God. So what's their assumption? Their assumption is if Jesus isn't the Father and the Father is the only true God who sent them, then Jesus isn't the only true God. You understand their assumption? Because I'm going to devote an entire session on John 17, 3, God willing, either tomorrow or sometime during the upcoming week on this in response to Joe's witnesses. It's going to be just on this. But right now, I need you to really focus, really focus, because I'm going to give you a quick answer. But you got to go back and listen to part one. You got to re-listen to part one. I gave you part one where I explained John 1 in context. Okay. Once you show a Jehovah's Witness John 1 and explain to them John 1. John 1, 1 to 3 says, Jesus was the word who was with God before creation. So you got to then walk them through the steps. So, okay, before creation, what do you have? What do you have before all creation? Because in John 1, 3, it says, Jesus, the word, before he became man, Jesus as the word, brought all things into being. All things were brought into being. All things were brought into existence. All creation was created by the word. Okay, listen. So if the word was used by God to bring all creation into existence, the word was used by God to bring all creation into being, that means the word existed before all creation, right? Right? John 1, 3, the logic of John 1, 3. Yeah, not there, not yet. Not first John 1, 1, 3. There it says he's the eternal life. That's a different point. That I'll make in John 17, 3. Don't, don't make it harder for yourself, Philip. Just fo focus here. Okay. So then you ask them, in eternity, before all creation, how many beings existed? Because before all creation, you have eternity. Before all creation, you have timelessness. Before all creation, right, you can't have a creature before all creation. How many beings existed in eternity before all creation? They'll tell you one, Jehovah. So Jehovah is eternal, uncreated, timeless because he existed before all creation. So he's always existed. But it says the word was there too. The word was there with God before all creation, before time was made, before space was made, before place was made. So the word, like God, the Father that he's with, is timeless, spaceless, uncreated, Eternal? Oh, wow. How many gods are eternal, uncreated by nature? How many gods are uncreated, timeless, and have eternally existed and will eternally exist? One. Who is that? That's Jehovah. Oh, so Jesus is the word that existed in eternity as God and with God. And I covered all this in the part one. So you got to go back, listen to part one. So if he existed eternally in the past, before creation, as God, with God, the only kind of God he can be is Jehovah. Well, if he's Jehovah, then the only God he can be is the only true God. So in John 17, 3, Jesus is not saying the Father is the only true God to the exclusion of the Son. He's the only true God in exclusion to me. He's the only true God in union with me because I'm the Son one with the Father, who existed with the Father before creation, who existed with the Father eternally, with God the Father, and as God in nature. So I am one with the only true God. I am not separate from the only true God. Otherwise, the only kind of God that Jesus could be would be a false one. You catch what I just did? You got what I did? Lord willing, I'm going to do an entire session on John 17, 3. We'll do an entire one where I'm going to go into this and then some. And I'm going to bring in 1 John, the epistle of John, for further corroboration. 
right? Everyone got it now? All right. Now, folks, before I open up, because I'm going to open up my Skype, it's now 2 p.m. It's nine minutes to 2, 2 p.m. my time. What time does David Wood go live? What time does David Wood go live? Give me the time because I want to time this. Guys, quickly, if you can tell me what time he goes live. Okay, three hours, ten minutes. All right. Here's what I can do. It's 2 p.m. right now, Lord willing. I can start a live stream in an hour, an hour from now, and I can do open Skype live Q&A, or I can do a topic. I can do the Muslim Jesus, or I can do open Skype live Q&A. How many of you want me to do open Skype live Q&A? Put a one. How many of you want me to do the Muslim Jesus? Put a two. The Muslim Jesus put a two. Okay. All right. Well, 1611 said two. All right. Let's try this again. We got more ones than twos. Now we got a lot more twos. All right. Well, let, how about this? Let's do a combination of both. I'll talk about the Muslim Jesus and open up to Q&A. All right. How about that? We'll do a combination of both. We'll talk a little bit about the Muslim Jesus and then Q&A. Let's do both. All right, so it's now 1.52 p.m. my time. Let's start in about an hour and 15 minutes. But we got 150. Don't disappoint me, and we only have 70. I want to see 200. So an hour and 15 minutes, God willing, come back. Go get your dinner, your lunch. Invite people. Hour 15 minutes, all right? Let's do this. In Jesus' name, Christ is risen, risen indeed. He's alive. We love you, Lord Jesus. Remember, you got 150. I don't want to see less than 150 or I'm going to retire. And I'm going to live with Protestants and lay hands on them. Take care. Christ is risen and we love you, Jesus. Pray for my daughters that God brings them to me. I miss them. Take care.